Hey guys, how's everybody doing today? I'm indoors today. I'm going to do a video indoors, which is unusual, but that's because I'm doing a cooking video today. It's a beautiful day outside. Spring is here. That means backpacking season is going to be in full swing very soon. So I've had repeated requests to show you how I make those dehydrated meals that you've seen me eat in the trail. So I thought I'd make some today and take you along for the ride. So uh, let's get started. I got my apron. Embarrassing. This isn't my apron. Hold on. Okay, that's better. Nothing against Kate Spade. Well, this is more my style. All right, so today I'm going to make some chicken chipotle with brown rice. I'm going to make beef chipotle with brown rice. And I'm going to make a vegetarian version of that. And uh, stick around, I'll show you how I'm going to do that. But uh, first things first. Things that you really need when you're cooking in the kitchen are number one this. First thing you do is go in your freezer where you keep your frosty glass and your favorite beer. Then you do one of these. Now I'm ready to cook. All right, so first thing, let's look at my dehydrator. It's a Hamilton Beach. It's not top of the line by any means, uh, but it's not the worst one on the market. It got pretty good reviews, good warranty, five-year warranty. I ordered it from Costco.ca up here in Canada, so we all know about Costco. Uh, they stand behind their products. So this one does have a temperature gauge. So if you touch this button here, you can set your temperature. The lowest it goes is 130, which I use for vegetables, fruit, things like that. And it goes all the way up to 160, which is suitable for meat. So you kind of want one that has a thermometer in it, I believe. So you can uh, make sure that you get your meat to the right temperature. And then it also has a timer. I can go all the way up to, let's see, how many hours? Thirty hours. I can go up. I can go forever with this thing. I usually set it for twelve hours and check it after five or six, see how it's working out. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty good dehydrator. Trays are not too bad. They do what I need it to do. Okay. So I haven't felt really the need to upgrade. I mean, if I was someone who was you know a prepper, prepping you know a lot of food for their whole family. I might want a bigger one, but uh, this one does for me. Basically one person, trail food for one season. So guys, I'm not an expert at all on dehydrating food. I've only did it for uh, about a year now, but I'm really happy with the results. And just about everything I learned about dehydrating food, I learned from YouTube. So you're in the right spot. I learned from YouTube. You can learn a little bit from me too. I learned from a few friends, Kevin Outdoors and Pine Martin. I do things differently than they do, but at the same time, I uh, you know learned the basics and gained some knowledge from them. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. Some people just cook the whole dish in one pot, dehydrate it all together, meat and vegetables and everything, throw it in a bag, freeze it, and they're good to go. That's fine. Some people will dehydrate each individual component of a dish separately and then assemble it at the last minute before they leave on the trail and uh, cook it like that. That's fine too. I'm a little bit in the middle. I like to do the meat separately and then I like to do the main body of the, the meal separately. So the, the rice and the vegetables I do in one component and the meat does another component. And there's a good reason I do that because when I do the main component of the dish, it's vegetarian, and I can add beef or chicken to that, so I can change the flavor profile to a beefy profile or a chicken profile. Actually, today, I'm going to be using turkey. 
or I eat uh, vegetarian sometimes on the trail too so I can eat it without meat. That's why I do it like that. It seems to work out pretty good for me. So uh, let's get started. See how it goes. So we're going to be first preparing the meat, okay, the protein for the uh, dehydrated meals. And we're going to be doing turkey. Right here I have two kilograms of ground turkey. So uh, we're going to do that first. And then I have some ground beef. This is extra lean ground beef. Uh, we'll weigh that. It feels like about a kilogram or so. So it's going to be interesting to see how much liquid we actually uh, dehydrate out of the food. Okay. So the, what, the best way to cook meat, I believe, is to boil it because fat is not your friend when you're talking about dehydrating food. Uh, any fats that are left in the food could go rancid and that's not good stuff. So ground turkey is fairly lean, but what we're going to do first is get it out of the package and boil it till it's just cooked. Then we'll show you what we're going to do next. Okay, so as I said, we've got some water on the boil here. We've got the ground turkey. Let's just put it in the water. And we're going to just cook it for a few minutes till it's just cooked through. So, what you want to do as the turkey's cooking is uh, break it up. You don't want big clumps of meat when you're dehydrating. You want smaller clumps of meat. You want to increase the surface area all right, that you're dehydrating because that's going to make things go faster when you're dehydrating. It's also going to make things go faster when you're rehydrating. Okay, so you can see now this turkey is nicely cooked. We've been working it with this spatula to keep the pieces smaller. We'll continue to work on that. But now what we want to do is take it over to the sink, put it in a colander, rinse it with hot water to remove any fat that might be clinging to those meat particles. Turkey's done. Okay, like I said, to the sink in a colander, drain it like so. Now just run some hot water from the tap through it. Get rid of any fat. Keep working it with the spatula. Drain it very well. That's probably good. And so you want to, at this point, make sure there's no big pieces. So go through it, break it up with your fingers. Make sure everything's of pretty uniform size, all right? Pretty boring stuff, but it's got to be done. So one step I find kind of worthwhile doing is, as you can see, the trays on this dehydrator are a little big. The holes are a little big. So it does come with these uh, plastic inserts that you can put in with smaller holes. But you know, I prefer just to get a piece of parchment paper, trace the insert, like that. Cut a liner out of parchment paper put it inside the tray that keeps everything clean and uh, it still dehydrates fine so let's get the first one done easy to do just like that doesn't have to be exact you know close enough that's what we're going for Close enough. All right. 
See where I'm going with that one? Nice. Okay, so at this point, I have the ground turkey in a bowl. It's cooled down somewhat, so now I like to season it. So I'm going to put some pepper, freshly ground pepper in there. Now we're going to season the other dish as we go, for sure. But sometimes I like using the chicken or the beef in other dishes. So I want to make sure it's seasoned properly. So let's go with a uh, good grind of pepper there. You got some salt. Quite a bit of salt. I don't know. You're not going to get accurate uh, recipes from me, guys. Just kind of a technique. I hope that's good enough for you. Let's go with some uh, paprika. That's going to give it some nice color. Bit of flavor. Oregano. Kind of a standard herb. And once in a while I like using this uh, Cool Runnings Caribbean Spice with roasted garlic. Let's throw that in chicken. Okay. And at this point we're going to mix it up. Make sure we have any of the clumps broken down. Nice uniform pieces. And there's the ground turkey we're going to dehydrate. Now I have done this with uh, chicken chicken breasts, you cook the chicken breasts and uh, shred it and do exactly the same process in dehydrating it. Um, I've also used canned chicken. You can buy canned chicken. That works very well too. Just uh, break it up into pieces and dehydrate it. But uh, for a change, I thought I'd do ground turkey this time. I think it's going to be okay. Let's get this on the trays. Okay, so I want to apologize for the poor lighting indoors, guys. Not much I can do about it. I don't have a big studio with all kinds of lights. So, we're going to get the ground turkey that's been cooked, rinsed, and seasoned onto a tray. And you want to try to get a fairly even layer. Best way to do that is with your hands. That's looking not too bad, I guess. So, let's get that first tray in the dehydrator. Start the next one. Apparently I can't count. There are five trays in this particular dehydrator. So, uh, I'm in better shape than I thought. Load up the second tray here. We'll get this in the dehydrator. Then we'll start on the ground beef. Awesome. Okay, same thing with the lean ground beef. Let's get that in the water. Get that cooking. We're going to make sure that's broken up well and cooked well. Then we're going to rinse it, season it, and dry it. It's going to be good. And I had one kilogram of ground beef, raw. So I just weighed that, one kilogram. All right, beef is done. Let's get it in the colander. Let's get it drained. Looks pretty good. Get all the fat out. I don't go crazy with this step, but I do give it a good solid rinse. Better to be safe than sorry. Okay, so there we have one kilogram of ground beef fresh out of the colander. So we're gonna add some spice to that. Let's add some chili powder. First of all, let's go with chili powder with this one. 
good amount of chili powder. Let's go with uh, paprika again, because why not? And uh, red pepper flakes. Oh, I got something dandy to put in here. Okay, this chili powder is from my garden. It's uh, a mix of some of the hottest peppers out there. Woo! <laughs> it's going to be spicy. So we got that. And uh, we'll go with some, how about just plain old Italiano herbs. And of course, good old salt. You know, everything you cook must have salt, must have pepper. That's your basic seasoning. Goes in everything. Salt and pepper. Now I'm going to mix this up. I'm going to break up all the clumps. Make sure everything's of uniform size. And we'll get this in the uh, dehydrator tray too. Then the fun begins. Okay, this is the last tray. We're going to get the beef on the last tray. One kilogram of beef seemed to fit okay on two of these trays. Let's get this spread out in a nice even layer. Perfect. Five trays of protein ready to go in the dehydrator. Awesome. Okay, three trays of ground turkey, two trays of ground beef ready to go in the dehydrator. So let's set the temperature. Max for this machine is 160. We're going to go with the max because it's meat. And let's go for 12 hours. So 12 hours, in my estimation, will fully dehydrate the meat. After about 5 hours, I'm going to come back and rotate the trays, mix up the meat a bit. That's going to make sure everything dehydrates evenly. But for sure, by tomorrow morning, we're going to have some good ground beef gravel and some good ground turkey gravel. And uh, we'll be able to assemble the rest of the recipe. So let's get her going. We'll see you in the morning, guys.